What's up, folks? Welcome to another awesome interview. My guest today is a human design gene key specialist, a concept that I had no idea about, but now I find it really, really interesting. She is an author. She is a meditation facilitator, and she's also a motivational speaker. Her book, Design Your Cloudless Life, has just been published in Russia and is soon to be translated in English. It was a very interesting talk. We spoke about how human design can be used as a tool to improve your life, to use it to reach your full potential, to reach your goals. And she was kind enough to read my human design chart on the show that you will see. And uh, we also spoke about meditation, the myths, and how we all were meditating all along without knowing that we were meditating. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guest, Amara Marina Marshenkulova. So, uh, you know, uh, welcome to the show, Amara. <laughs> so, uh, before you entered right, the studio, I was telling uh, Karen uh, how we met, right? Yeah. So, you know, but to the listeners, I'll still narrate mm-hmm. the story again. So, I, I, you know, I see this lady work, lost in a laptop, right? Working on something. And there's a book, the way this book is lying. There's a book lying next to her that says self-hypnosis. Mm-hmm. Now, I thought, see, I'm ignorant on this thing. So, mm-hmm. I thought that this woman is going to go back home, take out a pendulum and, you know, <laughs> hypnotize herself. See, ignorance, right? I don't know anything about it. Ignorance is a voice. So, I thought that, yeah, maybe. Maybe she's going to do that. But then I spoke to you about the book, mm-hmm. right? And you told me about self-hypnosis. And then you told me about the website, mm-hmm. your website. I came back home. I opened the website. Mm-hmm. I was fascinated. Why? Because I haven't experienced any such thing, you know, mm-hmm. called human design or gene keys. I was totally mm-hmm. unaware about it. So we'll take one every mm-hmm. topic one by one. Yeah. But let's just start with how a journalist from Russia ended up practicing <laughs> meditation in India and, you know, reading human mm-hmm. divine charts. Yeah, let's just hear about it. If you want to know how I came to know India specifically, like when I was a child, yep. I mean, life works in mysterious ways, right? It does. So when I was a child, I was in this beauty pageant. I was oh. seven years old. <laughs> My mom wanted to see me on the stage. I don't know why. <laughs> she still doesn't know why. So, And one of the things that I did in order to prepare for this pageant I was dancing in classical Indian dance. In Russia? It, it was not even in Moscow. I mean, I come from a very small southern town. I come from a Muslim background. Okay. So you see a Muslim Soviet girl, right? Now. Right. I mean, brought up by Soviet people. So, but for some reason, um, this Indian classical dance in my little hometown was a big thing. Really? And yes. what's the name of the hometown? What? Tirnaus. 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 It's a, a town of winds. Town of winds. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's cold a small town surrounded by mountains. Must be cold winds, yeah. <laughs> yes, very cold. So it happened that I learned this dance. Okay. And I won the pageant because of this dance, I believe so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then I went to this teacher to do a photo shoot. Uh-huh. So she um, self made these Indian clothes. Okay. So I was wearing them and she was taking a picture of them with really hard makeup, you know. Right. I couldn't recognize myself. But then I saw this book on her shelf. Later, I found out that it was Bhagavad Gita. Okay. I had no idea what this book is about. Yeah, obviously. I was seven years old, but when I saw the book, I was like, if I had this book, I would be the happiest person on earth. Why? I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> but that image of that book stayed in me. Right. And then many, many years after, in 2014, I came to India just to travel. That was your first visit, 2014. Yeah, okay. and that's it. That's it. And it, something it, happened and I stayed. <laughs> right. Yeah. Things happen always. Yeah. yeah. Things happen. Yeah. So, so, how, so yeah, how did you mm-hmm. get into meditation specifically? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll talk I about think, meditation in yeah. a bit, but I would really want to start with human design because Actually, I'm really curious about it. Actually, you cannot start with human design. Then the, the yeah, way you want, the way you want. Yes, let's, let's talk and about it. And I want to tell to everybody that meditation was first, is first, and it will be first no matter what. Okay. Because that's probably the main thing that I... I am an advocate of. Okay. And even human design, and I'll tell you what it is in a bit. If you don't look at human design through meditation, then you miss the point. Right. So I got into meditation. Uh, my first teacher was a Sufi teacher. Okay. And, uh, it was in 2003. That's when I started doing meditations that I knew that they were called meditations. Okay. But later on, I found out that I've been doing it for 
I mean, since I was a child, but right. I just didn't know that it was medication. medication. Okay. So, and wherever I went, and I was a journalist since maybe 2005. I mean, I've been writing uh, since I was a child. But okay. Meditation was something that was traveling with me wherever I went. Right. It was always with me, and it was my, I call it like my home pharmacy. Okay. Because <laughs> whenever I yeah. had problems, so you, that there was, was one your answer. Go to remedy. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And uh, the thing that a lot of people are not aware of is meditation is can be different. So the meditation can be. It's not just breathing and closing your eyes. Not just closing your eyes and sitting in lotus. Yeah, yeah. Meditation should be different because uh, a lot of people, they miss the point when they think that meditation doesn't suit them. Uh -huh. If they think that it doesn't suit them, that means that they chose the one that doesn't suit them at this specific moment for the intention that they have. But they are still meditating. Yeah. I mean, if you need right now to get out of your anger, right. if you sit in Vipassana, it will not help. Right. You're going to hate meditation yeah, yeah, because Vipassana yeah. doesn't help. Yeah. Yes, Vipassana is the ultimate meditation. This is the meditation how Buddha got enlightened, right. right? But in order to get there, we are modern people. We have so many blockages inside of us. True, yeah. And in order to get there, to be able to sit still and really meditate, you have to get rid of those anger issues. You have to uh, forgive. You have to um, get, get into that state where you are able to let go. Right. And this is where a lot of different awareness techniques come. Okay, so, so when you is, say that you were meditating since an yeah. early age, what were you doing yeah. if you weren't closing your eyes and oh breathing? Oh my god, I was doing so many different techniques. Okay, so that you I got to know doing, later on in life yes, that you yes. were meditating. Okay. Uh, as a child, I, I was doing like, I was talking to my body as a child. Hmm. And I wrote an article about it as well. Um, I was able to bring out different sensations. Wait, wait, you said you were talking to your body? Yes, I was five years old when like I you, remember. Is it another way of saying that you were talking to yourself? Yes. So there's a voice and you just talk to yourself, not uh, like actually, the... not to myself. Okay. Because we're not the body, as they say. Okay. I was talking specifically to my body parts. Like, I would be talking to my fingers and say, okay. Okay. So I would be able to talk to my fingers and bring out the sensations in them. Without... Uh, just by talking? Yeah, just by talking. Because okay. anybody can do that. All right. So the thing that I couldn't do, and I didn't know as a child, was when I was bringing out those sensations, I didn't know how to stop them. Okay. Because later on the sensation would, uh, I mean, the more you think about something, it grows. This is one of the universal laws. And uh, Obviously, that's got something to do with circulation, right? I mean, yes. But it gets G, so strong. Or, okay. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and then it started paining. Okay. And I would be crying. And I would be able to, and I was like, if I tell it to my mom, she would not understand me. Right. So I couldn't tell it to anybody. Okay. But these things, this is part of the awareness technique. Like when you talk to your body, you're able to reduce your pain, you're able to see what is wrong in your body, really, mm -hmm. uh, some things that the doctor cannot diagnose, for example. Okay. So this is also a part of meditation. So w what if someone, someone like me, who mm -hmm. comes from a background where meditation, the, you know, the typical meditation practices, you know, what mm -hmm. people know about, yeah. it. so not like concentrating and, you know, telling, talk to your body parts mm -hmm. the way you were doing, yeah. but like, you know, just sitting in a calm place, mm -hmm. deep breaths and meditating that mm -hmm. way. So I come from a background where people, you know, especially in my family, they don't believe because they have this other way of tackling life. So, okay, shit gets hard. So you get harder. So you just face it. You just mm -hmm. carry on and it will get okay. It will get okay. Eventually, <coughs> things will be all right. So I somehow have, you know, mm -hmm. so it has been indoctrinated. So I'm like, yeah, if, if things are bad, they will get fine. So I don't feel the need. To, I, you say that everyone needs meditation. Mm -hmm. So see, I have a, I have my vision, my goal, whatever that I want to achieve. And it's like, I am tunnel vision right now. So yeah. I don't feel the need to put in anything extra right now. Mm -hmm. So... What advice do you have for people who feel like that? So, I mean, so, you know. Okay, there are a couple of things I want to address there. Okay. First, you say I come from a place where meditation is a certain thing. Okay. That we are taught that Vipassana is the ultimate meditation. Okay. But you also come from the place where Osho is from. <laughs> yeah. So, Osho is uh, the person who actually brought the new type of meditation. It was not new. 
It was just new for people. It was not new. I mean, the meditation that he it was. I have seen when you go to the parks, ago. right? Yeah. So, so it's yeah. not like they are they are just vibrating from the top there to bottom. Yeah, they're like I, yeah. And, and I and I, I laughed I, I, because <laughs> it was funny to look at them, right? Obviously, it is funny to look at. Maybe anything. they do that in their own area. Yeah. where like-minded people, maybe. But I was new to it. I was jogging. I was like earning my five a.m. six a.m. Mm-hmm. running, right? And I saw this lady. She started as if it. looks like a kind of i don't know mm-hmm. exorcism or something it's weird it's, <laughs> it's weird because it was new to me right mm-hmm. i didn't know but maybe i was like you know i, I don't know blood flow circulation mm-hmm. whatever it mm-hmm. that must help right but it looked a bit weird it looks weird i mean even if a person is sitting under a tree for 40 days or 40 uh, nights Absolutely. it is weird. yeah <laughs> everything we people are really strange creatures you know whatever we think is out of our idea of what normal yes, is yes yes it is strange right? yeah. so we <laughs> we all tend to uh, underestimate and overestimate what a human being is yeah we have to be open yeah. to new ideas we have yeah. to be open, yes absolutely yes. so uh, what osho was saying was he was saying don't believe me mm-hmm. try it. okay just get a taste of it right that's all and mm-hmm. then forget me i mean i'm not here to be your guru your teacher or anything yeah So you have to be your own guru. You have yeah. to be your own teacher because this is how I got into human design. Uh-huh. When I was having so many questions, I was having so many doubts right. about how life is. I was nothing made sense to me. I mean, the things I come from Muslim culture, so right. um, and you can you can see how um, things. Since I'm here, I'm traveling. You can see that a lot of things back home didn't make sense to me. Of course, I yeah. wanted to, I wanted an explanation. If I need to do this, why do I need to do this? Right. So I was looking for self-empowerment tool, self-explanation, something, uh, something that would awaken this thing in me. Right. Not where I would run to mm-hmm. my teacher, to my guru every time I have a question, mm-hmm. you know? because this is what Osho was teaching, and this is what true masters were always teaching: to awaken that master within you. Right. Not to be attached to some, uh-huh. not to be attached to some teaching or some religion, but actually remember that um, whatever God you believe in, that God is in you. Yeah. Universe, cosmos. It's um, all you against the you, universe, you right? Name, whatever you yes. perceive, it's yes. you and the world, right? Yeah. So this is what I found in meditation, and this is what I found in human design and gene keys. Right. And in your, uh, you know, YouTube channel, mm-hmm. there's a video where you posted eight myths. Yeah. So can we discuss a few? <laughs> that mostly you know people yeah, will find you yeah. know okay yeah so mm-hmm. yeah, yeah please yeah because uh, even in my book um, the first chapter i actually dedicated to myths that a lot of people have about meditation okay because so many times my friends um, back home they would be asking me okay teach me how to meditate so should i sit like this or and i'm not into yoga i don't yeah. want to meditate it's like how yoga and meditation is connected in your mind right or Uh, why do you think that you have to sit if you're not able to sit? So there were so many things that I've collected over years, uh-huh. and I decided, okay, for my dear friends, yeah. <laughs> for all those who asked me these questions, yeah. and they are very valid questions. I mean, I'm not ridiculing them, yeah. because I was there on the other side as well, yeah. and I still am. It's not like I found answers to all the questions, uh, as they say. The moment you find answers to all the questions, the questions change, you know. So okay. I have now new questions. I was guessing the moment you have all the answers, you are dead. Yeah, and, and exactly. <laughs> so. Exactly. So I have new questions, but I was there. Hmm. So these are the myths that I address, like uh, yoga and meditation. Right. What is in common? Yoga. You cannot do yoga without meditation. Then it is an hmm. exercise. Hmm. But you can meditate without. You can meditate without doing yoga. Yeah. So these are the things that I address. Then a lot of people will tell me, "Okay, it's good for you. You are living in India. You know, it's like." You can meditate anywhere. <laughs> This is what they have an understanding about. I don't think that's possible. Exactly. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> and they think I live in ashram, you know, all year round. Yeah. I do go to ashram every year. Right. But there are twelve months, you know. I might spend one month in total in the ashram. Yeah. Exactly. But there are eleven more months, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and the idea in meditation is not to live the life and be in Himalayas because it's very easy to meditate in Himalayas. Okay. <laughs> it's very easy. Yeah. And it's very easy to meditate in the ashram as well because. Everything yeah. is supporting you. Yeah, the conducive environment, exactly. right? Yeah. But the idea in meditation is not to live the life that you were given. Hmm. The idea is to enhance the life that you were given. Right. To make it richer. Right. To make everything possible for you. Okay. So this is the meditation is a 
uh, the help right. to make a black and white picture right. into color picture. Okay, so one question. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not skeptical about it. I just it's want, okay. yeah, okay, it's because, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, so I did meditate a few times because I mm -hmm. had joined the, this martial arts class, right? Mm -hmm. So the master, right? So he yeah. made us meditate at the end mm -hmm. of it. And it yes. was the, 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 you know, the regular kind yeah. of meditation. Which is great. Uh, I mean, yeah, you sit down, yeah. silence, mm -hmm. you just, you know, try to calm yourself yeah. down. And I did that. And I, I, so here's the thing. Uh, I kind of like chaos in my mm -hmm. head. This is like what I feel. So... It was gone for 10, 15 minutes and I missed it and I missed it. I did not like the zone where I was all calm and because I like the noise. I, like, I somehow... I know exactly why. Yeah, people are troubled by it but I'm not troubled by it. I somehow liked it. I wanted that and those 15 minutes, I didn't feel like I lost something. It was okay. Yeah, I was very, mm -hmm. you know, uh, enlightening or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. It, yeah. was a, it was a good feeling. Yeah. But I knew that I can't even do that for five minutes because I don't want to be in that zone. So that's, it's not uh, abnormal, right? It's all right, right? It's because not abnormal because once I came into human design and since I've seen your chart. Hmm. <laughs> and we'll talk about that. Yes. I know why that meditation oh, was not okay. comfortable for you. Totally excited. Yeah. So yeah, let's start with human design then. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get into human design? Mm -hmm. Of course from Osho. But mm -hmm. yeah, let's just learn what's, what human design is. Um, first of all, let me tell you what human design is in short, right? Yeah. Uh, and then I can tell you how Please. I do it. Okay. So human design is basically a system. It's a phenomenal system, which tells you, okay, this is who you really are. Okay. So if you thought that you are this, or you are this, right? And we read everywhere like we need to change, we need to become better, we need to become smarter, we yeah. need to become more. Um, entrepreneurial blah 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 yeah actually human design says you don't need to change you don't need to become smarter and this and that because everything already was there but since we were born in certain families we were born in certain societies mm. we went to certain schools yeah uh, our friends were this and that we got conditioned okay yeah so human design is a system uh, which brings us into experiment of deconditioning and going back to our true nature Okay. And through human design, you see that every single person came into this world unique. Right. Because first, I was studying about myself. Yeah. Like, oh my God, I'm extraordinary. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but later on, when I started getting into other people's charts, yeah. I realized, oh my God, every single person is extraordinary. Yeah. And that made me actually, that uh, improved my relationship so much. Because once human design does that, once you find out about you, once you fall in love with yourself, once you accept yourself, right. and obviously take responsibility for who you are, yeah. because you cannot just say, I'm like this and that's it, because we have shadow side, we have gift side, oh. but you take responsibility for who, who you are, then you find out about your loved ones, then you right. find out about your friends, then you find out about your boss and uh, a neighbor and this, and it makes sense to you why they are like this, Okay. and then you become, you don't become tolerant, because tolerance is a different shade of hate where right. you tolerate somebody you actually accept the other person you actually understand life gets the a bit easier person. i guess it just life gets so much more um not easier that's not the wrong we didn't come here to have it easy okay yeah. and don't get me wrong i uh, like when things come into flow and uh, that's very rare but yeah, effort, yeah, right? yeah that's very but rare. we didn't come here to have it easy we came oh. here to live a fulfilled life <laughs> True. Have, yeah. has all the sides. Yeah. So once it happens, you kind of, you fall in love with humanity again. Okay. You don't say, oh my God, these people, it's like people are not kind and people are but, so greedy. But Amara, so people like, aren't kind. People are, I don't know, so dickheads. People, people are, are kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah they are. But people, <laughs> you know, somebody go said, on the internet, you might change your mind. <laughs> I don't know. I am in the <laughs> believe me, I'm a spiritual person who stands firmly on the ground and does a lot of mundane things okay. on a day-to-day <laughs> basis. So I just want to tell you, one person told me once, maybe I've read it somewhere, I mean, I've been reading so many books, there are no, no bad people, there are people who are hurt. Yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. So if that makes sense, if you stay with the truth for some time. Right. And just see everybody from that point. Right. Just experiment with it. And then tell me after that if people are kind or not. You're going to see 
completely different world. It's like you'll be in the same building, you'll mm -hmm. meet the same people, but just looking at, at them from a different angle, you're going to be living in a different world. So this is what awareness does. And awareness is a part of human design and meditation. Huh. So in short, this is what human design is. We calculate your chart like an astrology, right? But it is a completely different concept. From astrology. I wanted to ask that because it requires the natal, yeah. the natal yeah. information, right? Your yeah. place of birth, your date. This of one part of human design is astrology. Exactly. So another part is Kabbalah. Right. Another That's the Jewish. Is, yeah, the yeah. Jewish mystical yeah. branch. Right. Another part is chakra system, but a new chakra system. Okay. The another part is yes, yeah, and another part is uh, the I Ching, the Chinese Book of Changes. Okay. Then it is neutrinos, the study about neutrinos, DNA. Neutrinos are yeah, the things. Physics. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so it's we'll talk about that. science and new age. Ben but uh, astrology, I, have you ever faced uh, this heat from people or, you know, people who are in human design? Ha do you ever face such accusations that this is a cult practice or be because it's new, right? And even well, astrology, it, astrology is considered yeah. a science in India now. It has yeah. been, you know, the university. It's about time, you know, after thousands of years. <laughs> it comes from the Vedic knowledge, right? So yeah. the, the, I don't know the first uh, book on astronomy, but mm -hmm. which is in Veda. It's, I, I, I don't know. It's currently checked. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and now universities are teaching astrology in mm -hmm. India. Many universities are. So I don't think human design will mm -hmm. get that recognition so soon mm -hmm. because people still might be calling you, I don't know, blaming you for, I don't know, various people things. Do that. And yeah. actually, um, there is a reason for that as well. I mean, people who go to Osho, they are also called... Yeah, they follow a cult. Yeah, yeah, in a yeah. Way, yeah. Um, and a lot of people went through that accusations it's not only in India, it's not only in Russia, it's everywhere, all over the world. Right. There have been, like, if people believe something too deeply and they don't see anything else apart from their tunnel vision, uh -huh. they can be called fanatics. Yeah. So uh, it's a very good point, and I want to speak actually about Please. this because in human design, I also see fanatism. Hmm. And uh, I was very lucky that uh, the way I was brought into human design was through a person who actually showed me a different side of human design. That, because through him, when I connected meditation with human design, right. I realized that there is only one thing. It's awareness, it's meditativeness. Because right. meditation can be a technique, yeah. and meditation can be your state. Right. And then anything that you do becomes meditation. You jog, it is a meditation. Huh. You talk with me, and it is a meditation. Right. Because what is meditation in a... I mean, what is the base of meditation? It is being present. Right. That's it. So if you drink water and you're present while drinking water, feeling the water going down your mouth. Nobody you does talk, that. Nobody does that. But yeah. imagine yeah. how can such a small little thing, it becomes big. Right. And then it doesn't matter what you do. Everything is a meditation. So when I looked at human design through that perspective, it changed the whole thing for me, the whole scenery. Because um, the main human design school, they don't like to merge human design with any other discipline. Right. There are reasons for that, which I wouldn't want to go into, and uh, probably there is some validity to that. Right. But my teacher, he is, uh, his name is Chetan Parkin, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, as I said, life works in mysterious ways. The way I met him, it was <laughs> <laughs> very funny and interesting. I was already in India. Okay. Actually, the first time I heard about human design was when I was back in Russia. Uh -huh. I was interviewing, at the time I was a journalist, right. I was interviewing a musician okay. who came to the newsroom. And in the first five minutes, for some reason, he said, you don't know about human design? Okay. I was like, what is that? And obviously, by the time I had uh, experienced meditation and all the different schools of meditation, I've tried so many things by the time. So obviously, I got interested. So for three hours we were talking about human design and obviously the interview didn't work mm. <laughs> but later on I went into uh, I went online I found quite a few information quite a lot of information actually but it didn't bite right. I was like this guy was telling me it's so interesting and I thought something is there mm. you know but what I found on the internet it didn't connect yeah it didn't yeah. connect so one year passed I forgot about it mm. then accidentally I found Chetan Partin's book Right. online so I got it online I started reading and I was 
mind blown. I was like, oh my god, this knowledge was available to me a year ago, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't do anything. So I started extensively studying, reading, doing charts of my friends, family. I was actually bugging everybody. I was like, you need to know. <laughs> and people were like, come on, this is a new thing that you are now interested in. So this is how people saw it. Yeah, I don't know if people are yeah. 30 plus, if you're talking to people 25, 30 plus, so their opinions have been converted into principles. They don't want to introduce anything yeah. new, right? Yeah. It doesn't that happen. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's very, very difficult. True. Yeah. So after some time, I came to India and that book was traveling with me. Yeah. So it was funny. At the time, I was in Pune and I was sitting and um, uh, I was sitting with a friend with actually, yeah. <laughs> a friend? Yeah. <laughs> so we were sitting together and... Um, he pointed out that, look, this book is dedicated to Osho. Okay. And I was going to the uh, resort at that time. Right. So I was really surprised how come I didn't notice it before. So I started reading the introduction to the book. Okay. And it ended up that Chetan Patkin lived with Osho for 11 years. All right. When Osho was in his body and he was with him in the US and in India oh, so he's he a Britain, yeah. British guy I have seen the documentary yeah. that is circulating a lot nowadays in yeah. net, on Netflix right so I've seen a few yes, episodes yes, the wild wild country so he must yeah. be one of them yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes he lived there okay so I was so surprised like how come I didn't see, I mean who reads the introduction to the book yeah, yeah. Okay. so now all the listeners uh, I yeah. want to tell you whenever you read the book Please start yeah, I mean, there are two writers sitting on the table. Yes, I never read exactly. an introduction. I never read an introduction. But so yeah, as a people writer, should. To a writer, I'm telling yes. you that that's a must. Yeah, people because should read the introduction. Yeah, that's, it matters. It's like when you watch a movie, it's very important to get into the mood when you watch the first, the who is the cast. What for is the for movies, there are trailers, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, you are already in the mood when you are for movies. Yeah, but in the books, I mean, it matters. It yeah. just, that changed True. my life. They should Once read. I read it, and I was in Pune at the time, so I started looking for this book, if this book is in Russian. I couldn't find it. Okay. So I sent him an email. I said, look, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Amara. And I just became Amara because it, that's my sanyas name. Oh, so you yes. aren't... Oh, okay. <laughs> so you have named yourself Amara. Uh, I actually... That name came to me during meditation. Okay. I had the vision, so that's a different story. <laughs> oh, that is fascinating. So, yeah, my Russian name is Marina. So right I now, know your full name, but Amara, yeah. okay, that's your... So sanya. I put them together now. And Amara, Amara is Marina. the Sanskrit Amara? Amar Amara? Or? No, Amara, it's like, uh, it has so many different meanings. Three main meanings is eternal, okay. unfading, beloved. So, so eternal means the Sanskrit one, Amar, that's Amar, okay. right? Eternal, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I didn't know about yeah. the two. Okay, so yeah, let's go ahead then. <laughs> so, uh, I told Chetan, uh, I'm Amara and I'm also Sanyasin in promotion. I saw, read your book and I loved it so much and I love human design through your eyes. Right. And uh, I didn't see your book in English, in Russian, so let's maybe translate it. Right. And I was lucky enough that he re responded. So you translated his book as That's well? That's how it came, like okay. later on. So he re re replied, he said, no, my book is not translated, very nice to meet you. And we started communicating. Uh -huh. He said, obviously, if you have some ties with the publisher, we can, Yeah. I'll be happy if my book is in Russian. Right. I did not have any ties with publishers. But I said, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do it so much. So I started, I translated the introduction uh -huh. into Russian, and I started sending it to publishers. Right. I was very lucky that the biggest Russian publisher responded and they said, we're interested. Wow. That's and good. then yeah, they said, do you have experience in translating books? I said, um, yeah, yeah, you should have it. <laughs> I told them the truth that no. At that time, everyone should lie. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But they said, okay, we'll negotiate right now with their publisher. But yeah. Until that, can you translate a couple of other books for us? For us. So these were the books of Thich Nhat Hanh. Okay. It's a Zen master. He's very famous and he was nominated for Nobel Prize. Right. I mean, this guy, he lives in France and he's about 100 years old. And while I was translating his three little books, it was like meditation and so on. It was, okay. I think while I was translating, it was also changing me. Right. It happens, yes. The moment I translate, I finished translating that, the contract came. They said, we're doing it. Right. So I translated human design book. And it became, that book became so big in Russia. Uh -huh. 
So uh, then the next book, his second book is coming out uh, soon. So okay. I translated it as well. That's nice. But uh, by the time while I was translating, we were talking with Chetan a lot, we were communicating, and he was telling me all the time, like, when you start doing readings, this will happen, this will happen. And I said, I'm not planning to do readings, because by this time I was uh, teaching English on Skype, uh -huh. and I was an international journalist writing articles, freelancing, and I was already traveling, I didn't look for extra job, I was very happy. Right. But he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when we start, when you start doing the readings, you know, yeah, he knew this will happen. Knew. And so he kind of felt that later on he told me, I mean, he saw it in the chart. So okay. that was there. Can we do my <laughs> chart right yeah. now? Okay, yeah. So do you yeah. need any extra? I can bring my laptop. Or well, not laptop. I can bring my phone. Uh, That's yeah, please, easy. please. Okay. Cool. Yeah. What do you think, Zemi? <laughs> We, we were talking about my chart earlier. Yeah. Uh, is it like, do you disclose secrets as well? Do you find... I uh, <laughs> was just wondering. There's, she no, wanted it's a very good, a very good point. Okay. A lot of people, like when I consult, they say, okay, do you promise that this is confidential? Uh -huh. <laughs> so obviously I promise this is confidential um, if you tell me personal stuff. Okay. Definitely, because a lot of times... In, personal consultations, you hear a lot of stories, hey. but what I say is, I mean, you would not want to conceal anything which is in your chart, because it's, I mean, why would you want to conceal Please use the word awesome, it's heart? awesome. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. And you cannot use anybody unless you provide something in return. Okay. So, for example, you might have some weaknesses here, and the uh -huh. person says, okay, I can use it. It backfires. Okay. So, it just doesn't work. Right. So, uh, on the contrary, I would show everybody my chart. I would say, okay, show me your chart and let's see how we can work together. Yeah. And how different is this chart from Kundli that uh, in, uh, you if know, Vedic you astrology? Kundli, right? Yeah. You I mean, I, I, I've, like. I've seen images yeah. on Google. Yeah. So I'll show you how human design chart works. So it's about about understanding, like, human characteristics, like how you are as a person. Uh, it's, it tells who you are. It tells what is your specific way of making decisions. Uh-huh. It tells you uh, what are your weak sides and how to turn them into strengths. Okay. It shows you the areas where you can get influenced by others and what to do about it. Uh -huh. It shows you what kind of person you are in relationships and what your partner should know about you. Okay. It shows all the energy centers that you have right. and the centers that can switch on and off, switch on and off, and where you have to be careful. Okay. It shows you all the specific gifts and talents you right. have. It shows uh, basically your whole life path. Uh -huh. But it doesn't do predictions. Right. It says, okay, you have this skill, you have this skill, you have this skill. You can use it in engineering, you can use it in doctoring, you can use it in humanitarian right. subjects. It doesn't matter, but this is the skill that you have. Hmm. So it doesn't, um, it is not like astrology which shows you... That you're going to have a bad week, yes. or you're going to have a no. good week. Okay. This is why I call human design is an empowering tool. Okay. And if somebody ever uh, tells you that good there are bad it, yeah. things... In human design and your chart, that means you went to a wrong reader. Right. Because if it doesn't empower you, it's it not doesn't human. exist. And uh, how are, yeah. what are gene keys? Gene keys came from human design system. Okay. And so it's a part. It's a on part. Its own. Okay. No, now it's completely oh, separate. Okay. It's very different. It's, I'll I'm, tell you. Yes. Maybe first let me show you your chart. Yeah. I'm just excited. Yeah. And then... Okay, so this is what you look like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. This, see? <laughs> wow. Yeah. So every single little thing and number and in the combination as well, there is some information I, I, about you. I don't know. And I, I can talk 10 hours about one chart uh, and yeah, so I've, many I've, things. You know, we don't have 10 hours, otherwise I, I would have, you know, easily. Because yeah, I, but this is what it is. It's like human design okay. is not just a reading. Okay. Human design is like your personal workshop. Right. It Please is, explain. It's like, it's a whole education. You cannot just um, get what human design is by we, throwing bits and pieces. Will you but please we read that out? Uh, yeah. Abhimanyu, so, okay. Abhimanyu yeah. you are a manifester. Okay. So your type is a manifester. Uh -huh. Your authority is emotional. Okay. Single definition. Your profile, which is very important to remember, is 2-4 profile. 2-4. Hermit opportunist. Okay. So I can tell you a little bit about okay. it because it's, 
um, why it's important to go into human design in the right way. Okay. Because it needs to bring you some good. Yeah. It is not just information where you learn about your type, oh, I'm like this, you know. It is something that can tell you what to do. More like a tool. It has a, it is a tool, exactly. Yeah. It is exactly a tool and you have to use it as a tool. Right. Yeah. And it is an experiment. Once you learn about yourself, the most fun part starts because you start seeing everything, each part of this in your life. Yeah. And you start working with it. You start playing with it. Because a lot of times we are not living our, our design. A lot of times we are living our conditioned selves. Okay. And if you can just look at your life, you can say if you are living your design or not. For example, look at every area of your life. Hmm. Relationships, money, um, hobbies, health, everything. If everywhere everything is good, that means you are living your design and you don't need human design really. Okay. But if there are questions somewhere... Yes, I need it. <laughs> so, and I'll tell you honestly, manifestors, the only profile that manifestors who really want to know about themselves is the profile to four that you are. Because, oh, okay, okay, that doesn't make sense. You have to... <laughs> right. Because manifestors usually they don't like to go to do any kind of readings. They are too stubborn for that. Okay. Uh, but you have profile two four. Okay, profile and two, two four. four. These, are, these are the people who will be wanting to know about themselves till they die. So this is their quest for life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. and these are the people who. I would even say that you created this amazing project of yours right. in order not only to find out about people, but through every conversation you find out about yourself. That makes sense, yes. And this is 2-4, I'm 2-4. Okay. So, <laughs> so I know this profile even more so because I live it. Okay. And uh, I mean, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful way. It's um, people of um, who are manifestors first. Right. You know, the whole world population is divided into five types according to human okay. design. Okay, okay. So manifestors, generators, manifesting generators, which I am. Okay. We can make, we can, we can do current chart and see who she is. Yeah. And uh, there are projectors and reflectors. Okay. So manifestors are uh, the rare kind. Manifestors are less than eight percent of the world population. My mother told me. Yeah. <laughs> you are rare, right? <laughs> but did your mother give you a lot of freedom when you were a child? My. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. they did. In fact, that's I, mm -hmm. I'm I'm really grateful for the fact. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel that maybe if my parents would mm -hmm. have been a little strict, more strict mm -hmm. and more rigid, I maybe I would have done better in life. I don't know because you were I, actually in the wild. yeah, yeah, because because you know I don't have any uh, you know kind of I've never faced any kind of uh, any suppression or something that shit I want to get out of this. So I'm not that angry right now because they were always you know. You have no idea how lucky you are. Because I, I know, I know. Are the most broken people in society because parents try to change them. Oh, that never happened. They are independent since they are born. These are the kids who start crawling faster than others. They break things because they want to find out about the world faster. And they usually don't like to ask permission. They're already out in the garden or out in the world. Okay, yeah, I can relate to that, yeah. Yeah, so if parents let you do that, unless you, um, I mean, children's uh, bringing up and... Uh, how to communicate with adults is different. Maybe manifestors. my parents were manifestors as well, and they were like, let this manifestor <laughs> manifest whatever he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> These are wise parents, I would say. Yeah. These are very wise parents, because I've seen manifestors who are broken. Okay. And I've seen manifestors who live their potential. But when you say broken, okay, broken is a very, you know, uh, it's like, um, you know, shattered. But things yeah. happen to you, right? I mean, yeah. I've faced... Uh, relationship issues, mm -hmm. I've faced health issues, mm -hmm. I've faced so and I've faced yeah. uh, what to do in life issues as well. So broken, yeah. I think you feel the heat, not necessarily from your parents. I'm lucky that I did not face that. I'll uh, explain what yeah. I mean by the word broken. Yeah. It is a harsh word. Yeah, it is. But if you understand the real nature of manifestors, manifestors were, uh, they came into the world, they are kings in the past. Okay. So these people, they Obviously, we don't have many kings anymore. Okay. But the crown still uh, spiritually yeah, is there. The, you know? the, the title stays. Yeah. yeah. So whatever manifestors can get away with, hmm. very few people can. Because the aura is not absorbing like generators. They are embracing. The generators are this humming, bubbling, and this warm, fuzzy creature that right. we all want to cuddle with. Yeah. Manifestors are <laughs> like this. Okay. Stay away. <laughs> because that makes sense. 
Kings, they should not be cuddly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Queens should not embrace their peasants all the time. Like everybody. This is not them. So it makes sense. Why? Yeah, yeah, it does. But the, your profile makes you warm. Okay. Because you have this. Because manifestors are very um, independent, individual, very. Like if you see a manifestor coming into the room, uh-huh. you immediately know this is a manifestor. Like I mean, oh, I, I can the tell. Vibe, the vibe. Yes. Okay. The vibe is there. I mean, you see the crown. Right. <laughs> you cannot help it. It's like it's there. Interesting. And these are the people. Uh, like if you have a manifestor friend, to sit down with them and say, okay, share your feelings. Tell me what you feel right now. They'll be like, uh, give yeah. me the facts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this and this and this. <laughs> and if I want to share them, then I'll share myself. You know. Yeah. So they are more, um, they're not these fuzzy beings that we like to um, share our life experiences with unless they want to. Yeah. So this is but one of many, it, yes. many things. Yeah. And manifestors are the most amazing achievers in the world. Okay. I hope if that they live by their design. Yeah. Oh. If they live by their design, just mere presence of yours in any kind of company um, like catalyzes things in their lives. Right. Yeah. But obviously, manifestors would like to delegate because they think that nobody can do things better than them. Yeah. Which a lot of times it is, is true. Issue, yeah, it is. <laughs> so it's very difficult for them to let go of that control. Okay. But there is a strategy in life for manifestors to follow. Right. That is to inform other people when you do something. The okay. people who are involved because they don't like to inform. It's like my friend, um, she was dating a manifestor. So okay. they're sitting and uh, having dinner. All of a sudden, he stands up and leaves. Okay. She's shocked. Yeah. What what did I do wrong? What yeah. happened? Oh my god. So she she was crying and half an hour he came back and he's like, What's wrong? He just went to buy some bread, you know? Because the bread So was the guy was manifestor, right? Yes. So I don't see the manifestors fall away. He just went to buy some bread. Exactly. Yeah. Obviously you will not see because you're a manifestor. <laughs> <laughs> this is something you would do. But the best situation for you not to scare your girlfriend and give your heart attack would inform. be to tell her, Okay. Not to ask permission, like, honey, can I buy bread? Yeah. No. I'm going to buy bread because it's finished. Okay. That phrase would save you a lot of trouble. Okay. So this is informing. Okay. In, because for manifestors, a lot of times, ask, uh, give, informing means they think it's asking permission. Okay. It's thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, before jumping off with a parachute, please right. tell your instructor that you are doing it. Because okay. they jump without telling. We've had these stories. Right. I mean, I have so many stories from manifestors. It's like I can write a book no just, just about them. <laughs> Coming yes. from the book world. Yeah. Yes, let's talk about your book. So, yeah. yeah. First, it has a long title. A very long title. One of the longest really? titles. Really? It says, wait, I have written it just down. three words. No, no. What is uh, Design Your Cloudless Life, yeah. A Big Book of Practices ah. and Meditations for This and That. <laughs> that's okay, that's a short... Uh, the short version is Design Your Cloud. Design your cloudless life. Design your cloudless yeah. life, yeah. Because then it says, big book of practice. Huh? Because design your cloudless life doesn't really explain what the book is about. Okay. But that little explanation... Yeah, that, that, it's beautiful. It's just that yeah. I found it really long yeah. for a book and I don't have any complaints for that. It's just that I want you to tell me about it. Like First, it yeah. is it starts with meditation. We heard about that. Yes. But then it's all about... So this whole, whole book is about uh, different meditation techniques that I've practiced okay. throughout more than 15 years um, and I'm teaching now meditation right. tomorrow. I'm doing online courses and live courses. Oh, nice. And uh, I also... Through your website, right? I've yeah. been to your website. Yeah. It is very detailed. So yeah. you people can actually go to your website and contact you for... Absolutely, absolutely. They can contact me. Online classes online, as well. Online course, classes okay. and online courses as well. Right. Yeah. And... Uh, I also give a lot of for free. Yeah. Like I have this blog where I write, and in the blog, in uh, almost every single article, there is some awareness technique that people can okay. practice. Okay. Right. And I have a newsletter, so it's free. People can sign up and. I think it. I think human design yeah. will have in future because I think it's still a new concept in India. Is it? In India, yes. Yes. But astrology. Uh, I mean, the every... I mean, it's pretty big. It's getting bigger and bigger. And uh, since you've been, I mean, you are from Russia, so. Yeah. Uh, how is it accepted culturally? I mean, in Russia and in India, like uh, mm-hmm. so far. But what's your experience? Oh, okay, yeah. I'll tell you. First, let me just finish yeah, please, what is please. the book about. Yes. So it's about uh, meditation and human design. Hmm. So I give here recommendations for specific, uh, like if you have this thing in chart, right. you can create a chart for free, and then you can see 
if you have this little thing in your chart, then you can do this meditation for this purpose. Right. So I give explanations. I give this connection, okay. basically. Because you cannot leave your design without awareness. Right. And meditations help to raise your level of awareness. That's how whole it becomes. Okay, so together. if someone is troubled, let's say, physically or health yeah. issues or Every, life issues. Whatever so, it is. So there are specific kind of meditations in this book to practice for... For every single right. situation in your life. Okay. I would say this is a pharmacy. Huh? <laughs> and these are the techniques that anybody can do without going out of home. Right. No props are needed. Perfect. Yeah. So, and c coming back to your question about how uh, human design is perceived in my home country. Yeah. Because culturally in India, yeah. astrology is a big thing. Yeah. It's a big thing. If you go, you know, I, I know about mm -hmm. Hindu families. Mm -hmm. I can't say much about Muslim families because I don't know whether they, do they believe in astrology? I, I don't no. know. I don't think no. so. You come no, from a Muslim background, yeah. right? So do they? But as I said, uh, my parents were too much Soviet. Uh, okay. Soviet. Like my grandma, she was a Sufi. All right. She was praying and uh, singing us yeah, and yeah, zikras yeah. and everything. But my parents, they're culturally Muslim, but they don't practice. Hmm, okay. So, um, so in my family, I just saw it from my grandma. And my grandfather also, he was a Soviet guy. And my grandma, she was hiding okay. her prayers from him. Right. From <laughs> <laughs> so, culturally, Russia is full of different confessions and nationalities and religions and everything. Yeah. So, in Russia, surprisingly, human design is becoming so big. Okay. It's just huge. Right. And it's becoming so popular. And I see the uh, good side and the bad side. Okay. That's with everything. Yeah. I mean, you talk yeah. about feminism, there's good yeah. side and there's because bad side. Because when I see fanaticism, uh, like when people are too fanatics about yoga, when people are too fanatics about spiritualism, in quotes. Yeah. They get very um, aggressive about it. They want exactly, to impose it on other yes, people, right? Exactly. That's what's going to happen. It defeats the purpose. Yeah, yeah, it defeats the purpose. Yeah, yeah. So it's that's how I connected human design with meditation. Because if you truly meditate, you don't get fanatic. Yeah. You actually. It's very strange. It's very difficult to explain what happens when um, meditation becomes a part of your daily day-to-day -day routine. It's like then anything becomes easy. And not like easy, I don't know if easy is the right, the right word, but everything becomes right. Whatever happens to you becomes, yeah, right. Yeah, and there's less becomes, pressure, you yes, don't seek you, answers, right? Yes, you, you start seek... being a victim of circumstances. Exactly. You kind yeah. of see good in everything. Right. You see good in people, you meet people. I mean, your relationships improve. I personally can say that it meditation helped and helps my relationships that that makes sense because most of the times my guard is always up mm -hmm. when i'm out may, maybe because of mm -hmm. you know things you hear this is how society is mm -hmm. and so it's very strange nowadays because you don't even uh, people they know each other mm -hmm. via instagram or yeah. every people know who each other are. like i if i go to a cafe regularly most of the times i will know who that person that person mm -hmm. but they kind of ignore right there's this negative barrier around everyone they yeah. just live in their own little world yeah. and whenever people come closer so there's this yeah. guard uh, you know that gets up and you don't yeah. want to mingle with anyone forget mingle yeah just get negative vibes or maybe you just you know those are self self inflicted i don't know it is in the cities helps a lot yeah it does, it does we cannot afford ourselves to be too sensitive right because if we're too sensitive everybody can hurt us okay so but actually there is an uh, another side of being sensitive okay whenever we say that people are not kind this is what we're saying about ourselves when is when was a situation when i was not kind so sensitivity doesn't mean um Weakness. Yeah, Sensitivity is actually, it's such strength. It's like they say, and nobody can hurt you, only you can hurt you. Yeah. So if somebody tries to hurt you, if you don't take it personally, it doesn't hurt you. Yeah, it never, hurts. It never hurts. If somebody tries to offend you, yeah. if you don't take this offense on you, it doesn't offend you. Because that yeah. fight or that conflict, it gets over in seconds, right? Exactly. When you go back and you sweat about exactly. it and you think about it, you're just damaging yourself, right? Every unless you got fight we have is in, now minds. Yeah, unless, it's not in reality. Unless you get your teeth broken or something, that is <laughs> something to worry about. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One thing that I really wanted to ask, I think we are short on time, but yeah, I really wanted to ask about this. On your Instagram profile, mm -hmm. I saw this thing and that 
although I was, you know, absorbing, you know, okay, she's into human design that I don't know about. I'm reading. Mm-hmm. It's fascinating. But then I saw that cat picture, the most, <laughs> least, it talks about past life. I really want to talk about it. Like, past life. So it's yes, yes. Because you found out you were a king in your past life. <laughs> no, no. But that was earlier. I, I got to know right now that I was king, right? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, here's the thing. Uh, you talk about pa- past life and you said that you were a male. When you were a male. In, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. He, how? <laughs> okay, past life regression. This is one of the things that I do, and I offer it to my uh, to people in my online courses as well. Okay. So people can do in a very safe environment themselves past life regression with my pre-recorded. Okay. Thing. And I came to this first um, when my brother passed away. Right. Uh, it was happened thirteen years ago in two thousand five. Hmm. I was very angry, even okay. though meditation was already part of my life, but right. I was all very upset. How come? How could this happen? You know, he was so young, he just newly married, and yeah. his wife was expecting a child, and how could this happen, you know? And then my friend gave me these books, Michael Newton, okay. Journey of a Soul, and Destiny of a Soul, uh-huh. and those books transformed me. Okay. My understanding about you know, what happens when people die... It's like sometimes people tell you something and you immediately vibe with this. You know this is true. Yeah. You cannot give scientific explanation to that, but you know this is true. Yeah. So in my gut, in my core, I knew that this is true. And I was reading and it really helped me make peace okay. with uh, what happened to my brother. Uh-huh. And later on, I started um, uncovering this topic more and more. And I went to different courses on that. And then during rebirthing session, it's yeah. a specific type of breathing. I had my first past life. When I saw myself as a man, and extraordinary, actually, that was such an experience. I didn't even question that it was true or not. Is it possible that maybe the sense of loss that you experienced, right, Mm -hmm. and everything, maybe you wanted to get out of it, Mm -hmm. forced your mind to imagine a few things that, is it imagination? That's what I really want to know. You Mm -hmm. believe that it was, uh, you know, a a journey, you traveled through time, or however you want to put it, right? But I see, you say life works in, in mm-hmm. mysterious ways. I think life is your brain, your head, yeah. right? Everything is your head. So your head works yeah. in a mysterious way, right? I mean, yes, everything is an illusion, mm-hmm. even our conversation right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's that's getting very unreal. Let's not go there. I, I lose I'm my not, mind. I lose I'm my not mind. angry even a little bit. <laughs> I actually love your questions because that's a very valid question. And yeah, I, so can it be some... Yeah. Because mind plays tricks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I still can't uh, yeah. comprehend dreams properly right now. It's like, you know, a different. I would like some expert to come and talk mm-hmm. about dreams as well. But let's talk about, you know, forced imagination where you wanted, your brain wanted to go mm-hmm. that way that, okay, this is my past life, maybe. Mm-hmm. And then you, your brain tells you, okay, you were this. And you believe in that, which makes sense because you mm-hmm. felt elevated after that. You felt better, enlightened, right? So yeah. which makes sense to you. But telling other people that, okay, this is a way to past life. Mm-hmm. Is it valid? Like, there really? are several points in it, and I hope I'll be able to cover them. Yeah. It's a very valid question. Right. You know, <clears throat> first I want to start with something that Albert Einstein said once. Okay. You can live in a world where miracles don't exist. Right. Or you can live in a world where miracles exist, so uh-huh. you choose. Okay. Since I was a child, I chose life where miracles exist. Right. Because even the conversa- conversation that we're having right now is part of that miracle. Uh-huh. That's one thing. I believe that, yeah. Then, um, out of all the past life regressions that I did in my life, they helped me and they transformed parts of my life in the ways that I cannot even explain. Things that happen in my life that uh, I'm not able to share today, and maybe ever, I had proof for everything that I believe in. Okay. But the thing what happened is, with belief, it's a tricky thing, you know? We, as a collective human beings, we say, first show me, and then I will believe you. Yeah. But it doesn't work that way. First you believe makes sense, though. Something. It makes sense, though. It makes sense to the collective mind. It's like two plus two is four because we were taught like that. Yeah. But there are so many scientific proofs that two plus two is not four sometimes. I two plus two is four. <laughs> so, so, that is a collective consciousness. It's like if 100 people are saying like that. Yeah. If there are 20 people left, they'll be more inclined towards this. Okay. But 
first you believe in something right. and then you see the proof. So I tested that okay. in my life. It didn't come immediately. Yeah. But I tested that. Right. So it came true in my life. Okay. So I always say, don't believe me. Try. Try. Yeah. Meditation. Don't believe me that it helps. Just imagine for five minutes, imagine that what I'm saying is true. Yeah. And in those five minutes I can find a way to your heart. Right. And this is what the meditation does. In five minutes you just let go of your control. I mean, what you're gonna what you have to lose. Meditation tells you that you have a better life. Yeah. Why don't you want Why to have a better life? life? Yeah, makes sense. So then in those five minutes, that's enough to let go of the guard that you have around. Right. Because obviously you can, um, you can tell yourself that it's your brain who created these visions and everything. But if, you, if people like, who are scientists, if you believe in science, people like Michael Newton, Brian Weiss, and these were people who did not believe in this kind of thing hmm. when they first encountered this. Right. They were like any um, medical doctor. They were very much... Um, they wanted proof for everything. No, they, they, yeah, they didn't believe. Yeah. The doctors are actually the most people who are not believers. Okay. So if these people found their proof, yeah. I thought, okay, maybe there is something to it. And that maybe opened a huge huge new different world for me that changed my life that's right it's not changing Amaya, <laughs> i had fun talking to you i too, yeah you. i think i still think that there is a lot more to talk oh, about yes. a lot I mean, more this is just but, a, yeah. even not a tip of the iceberg but we, uh, we would yeah. love to have you again some other time it will be amazing I would to talk love about to. yes thank you so yeah, much thank you very much thank for your you so curiosity much. thank you so because much because it's very important